Have you heard of zenithal lighting? Probably have if you're interested in painting and you've been doing more things in the miniature world. Zenithal or zenith is the concept of light being at its zenith, roughly 12 o'clock, maybe one, whatever, and light coming down. So this concept is generally part of the whole volumetric lighting thing where we have a miniature creating uh, shadow and light. Now, there are more reasons than just that to get going, and we're gonna dive right into all of it. I'm Khan, and you're watching The Wrath of Minis. Why do painters paint with zenithal? Why do we even do that? Now, I've heard different terms for this thing. I've heard it called underpainting. And yes, we are creating a form of light and shadow. And that's very interesting because Obviously, the places that are in shadow will tend to be darker and the places that are in light will tend to be brighter. So it's an easy way for us to create that effect by priming. So what we'll do is we will take a model, prime it all black, and then we would take a white and spray down from a sort of top-down angle and catch all of the top areas and they will then all of a sudden become white. It's interesting because when you look at a model in that perspective, we are creating light and shadow. And with that play, then we can start to add colors to it. So I'm gonna bring this model into play. I'm just gonna leave him here because he's cool. I like him. I'm gonna paint him at some point. Perhaps as you can see with this model, uh, which I've done in a zenithal lighting, primed black and then sprayed with white, shows you exactly how light would fall upon this model if light was coming from here, shining down this way. And if we look at his back, his back is in total, practically total darkness. And so it's a great way of being able to see how light would actually work on a miniature. It's definitely a worthwhile thing testing. Being able to see where you think light might be sitting is a wonderful way before even painting just to get a sense of the composition of your piece. There are different reasons besides why we'd also want to do zenithal lighting. Part of it is what colors are we trying to work with in our model? How do we want it to look at the end of it all? Do you need to even zenithal? Well, you know, we'll see. We're gonna work into that. But let's start with this little chart that I made in my spare time, you know? It's really straightforward. What I'm showing you here is just how a color interacts on top of another color. So for instance, I've got these black lines here and I've got this white space here. And so you can see how vibrant colors are or how muted colors become when they paint over a certain color. Paint when it's thinned out appropriately, is not completely opaque. No color really is completely opaque unless you apply multiple coats generally down or it's in a very thick layer. And when we're painting miniatures, we tend not want to do thick layers because we can mess up the details and various other things. The way that these colors are more vibrant over white and less vibrant over black is an important element. So over this black, as we look, you can see that some colors show up pretty strongly, even though it's like funny, like this yellow here is quite strong yellow, but you can see a lot of the black is still there. If we go over to these blues, you almost can't even tell that they're being affecting that black. Obviously they're there, but it's so much more subtle. If you are interested in the sense of volumes and volumetric lighting, then having your pre-made shadows and then applying this same coat with the same sort of consistency and thickness over the entire model means you're naturally are going to have those shadows built in, which is super cool and from, it makes it for a much easier experience with painting your model because you will naturally already have those shadows in place. It allows us more control and a better sense about where things should be placed rather than just, you know, pulling it completely from our own mind, which is, you can do, but it's harder. So may as well make it easier. Understanding light placements of things and creating an undercoat makes it easier on ourselves by allowing us to control vibrancy and shadows all through the sense of what a zenithal light is doing. It's such an important tool and so many people, professionals absolutely are utilizing this thing, this concept to help them hone, tune and create their works of art. We can take their knowledge to a sense and apply it to our own. Even if we don't do it in quite the same way, we are learning to see the miniature with shadow and with light 
and it can be, again, a very powerful tool. There might be some thought about why you might not want to utilize Xenothor lighting at all. And there are a couple of things about this. Firstly, Xenothor lighting can be completely pointless, completely useless, if you do not thin your paints you will find that if your paint's thick enough, it doesn't matter what the undercoat is because you're immediately covering up. And though all paint, it's got levels of transparency to it, depending on your thickness and thinness ratios of how much of water you're applying, will really greatly affect the usefulness of what is a Xenothor light. Also, if you're painting in a more flattish style, then you might not need any of this because if you're gonna go and paint red and you want it to be vibrant, you just paint the entire thing white and you would be pretty much set. You don't have to go through the process of making these multi-layer things because that's just more steps in your workflow. But if you're interested in that journey and exploring how light works, then this is a wonderful place to be and something that you should absolutely have your attention and you should be looking into and exploring on your own terms. If you wanna do Xenothor lighting, you can do it in two different ways that I think will work. You can do it in two prime cans, you get one black, one white. You spray the black first, you get the entire model covered, and then you spray white from a zenith point from a certain angle or from top down. Or you can do it from an airbrush if you've got an airbrush, and that's how I do it. So with an airbrush, surface primer, different companies make it. They're all pretty good to me. Vallejo is just the one I've got. And then for the white, this is just a little tip for everyone who's got an airbrush. Liquitex acrylic ink white is great. Now you have to understand a little bit of the properties of paint. White pigment is bigger than other colored pigments, interestingly. Why that's the case, I have no idea. It just happens to be. And so when you apply white into an airbrush, it has a tendency to clog more so than other colors. And so the ink, because it's already a super hyperfluid liquid, it's great for straight shooting right out of an airbrush without having to really use any thinner of any kind. And so I use this as my Zenithal lighting color, which is awesome. It's not very expensive and it's just great out of the airbrush. What if you don't have a primer that is white and you don't have an airbrush? This is for you guys out there who might not have either one of those things and you just want to experiment and just see how it might work for you. Well, you can actually dry brush uh, white on top of a black model to create the same sense of what a Xenothor light will do. I would like to make a mark though. So you need some white paint and you're going to need a dry brush. Now, I would recommend two things here, quite important. A makeup style brush, so it's very soft rather than like a flat edge uh, brush that you might normally use for dry brushing. This just gives it better way of making a, not just a smoother, uh, paint, but catching more of the area and being softer with your paint. And that's, that's you kind of need to do that because you're trying to create a sense of what light and shadow is doing. Another thing that you must be absolutely very aware of is that dry brushing is naturally a very dry, uh, dry paint. Dry paint creates a texture, which is something we kind of actually want to avoid. We don't want to be creating these textures. Sometimes we do, but this isn't the place to do it. So when you're utilizing a dry brush of this kind of nature, soft sort of style, uh, more makeup brush, we want to apply just the slightest amount of water to our brush. We just dip it in. If you've got like a sponge that's got some water, dip it into that, maybe remove some of the excess, then utilize it. The water allows the paint to just come off the brush a little more smoothly, meaning that we can avoid the texture buildup, which we would naturally get with dry brushing. So it is a way of kind of creating the same sense of the underpainting or Xenothor light uh, without either the aerosol can or a airbrush. So if you just wanna just try it, this could be a neat way of doing it. Hopefully this video was helpful and gave you a sense about what you can do with Xenothor Light and why it's so important in our hobby. If you guys like this video, you know, please press the like, subscribe. It's all super helpful and wonderful to us and it gives us the reasons to put out even more video content about miniature painting. And with that being said and done, I'm out of here. <laughs>